Hey, how y'all doing out there? Be you transformed. That's right, be you transformed. That's what this is called right here. I'm over here in Mark 7. I'm going to pick it up verse 6. It says, He answered and said unto them, Well hath he said, as prophesied of you hypocrites, as it is written, This people honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. How be it in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines of commandments of men, for laying aside the commandment of God, hold, you, hold fa you hold the tradition of men, as the washing of pots and cups and many other such like things you do. And he said unto them, keep in mind all these letters are written in red, he said, full well you reject the commandment of God that you may keep your own traditions. I'm going to read something again here. It says here, it says, you hypocrites, as it is written, this people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Is your heart far from God? Let's go to Isaiah 29. Is your heart far from God? He called them hypocrites. Hey, and I'm, I'm, I'm guilty. Isaiah 29. Isaiah 29. He said, you hypocrite. Isaiah 29, I'm going to read verse 13, says. 29, 13 says, Wherefore the Lord said, For as much as this people draw near me with their mouth, and their lips do honor me, but have removed their heart far from me, and their fear toward me is taught, by the precept of men. Do you hear that? By the precept of men. Let's back up there one go to Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 10. Here's a precept of men. Okay? Here's a precept of men. Just for an example, okay? Now I'm fixing to nail the whole world. Y'all fixing to get mad at me out there that don't know no better. And I'm going to just say this right now. I forgive you. I forgive you right now for what you're fixing to think about me. Because I love you. And I'm fixing to throw myself underneath your bus. Watch this. Jeremiah chapter 10. He said they draw near me with their lips. Oh, they'll Jesus you to death out there in them Christian churches. They sure will. I ain't got nothing against no Christians. But that's just predominantly who's dealing with the falsities of the Christians. You know, I mean, there's some good Christians out there. You go watch some of them Bible Christians. <laughs> them brothers will tell you exactly what it says. <laughs> Them's the Christians you need to be listening to, them Bible Christians to keep the Sabbath. That's right. All right. Over here in Jeremiah 10. Let me get on over there. I'll get windy sometime. I'm sorry. Jeremiah 10. Here's a precept of men. He says, Hear you the word which the Lord speaks unto you, O house of Israel. Well, now, if we believe in Jesus, according to this New Testament, it says we are of the seed of Abraham. Now, if we're of the seed of Abraham and he's talking to us, we are of the house of Israel. Go on and go over in the New Testament and read about the seed of Abraham. All right. But right now we're talking about the Israel and that's us. We are the house of Israel. We've been adopted into this thing according to the adoption of Jesus Christ. And who do you think he bartered with and made that deal with? He made that deal with Abraham. He thought he was a just man, and he was a just man. He made a promise to him, and he's keeping it. He says, Thus saith the Lord, Learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. For the customs of the people are vain. So what I'm fixing to read you you probably do this, and if you don't, then praise God. But if you do, do this. Please consider your ways. Please consider your ways. I'm not judging you, but I'm fixing to read you something out of the Bible that says, don't do this. He says, for the customs of the people are vain. For one cutteth a tree out of the forest, the work of the hands of a workman with an axe. I used to do this very thing every year. I did. I would go to a tree farm. I had a bow saw, though. I didn't have an axe. Okay? And what does he say right here? He says, They deck it with silver and with gold, and they fasten it with nails and with the hammers, that it move not. So they got it fastened with the hammer and the nails. They are upright as a palm tree. They don't speak. 
They don't need to be born because they cannot go anywhere. Be not afraid of them, for they cannot do evil, neither also is it in them to do good. For as much for as much as there is none like unto you, O Lord, thou art great, and thy name is great in might. Who would not fear you, O king of nations? See, now I'm going to ask you this very question. He says, learn not the way of the heathen. They go out every year. They cut down a tree. They bring it into their house. They used to fasten them with nails. Now they got these fan dancy pot holders you can stick a tree in. And they got all these fake trees now you can go buy. That just looks like a tree, all right? He says, don't do that. And then right after he said, don't do that, he said, there is none like you, O Lord. So why would we bring a tree into our home, which is what? It's a custom of man, a tradition of man, because the Bible says not to do it. You ain't supposed to bring no tree to your house and deck it with silver and gold. It says it right there in Jeremiah. And then what's it say back here in Exodus 20? Thou shalt not put any God before me. What's that tree represent? That tree represents old Slewfoot. That's right, the enemy. Because you know he used to be the most pretty angel that was ever created. And that's what happened. Pride entered into his heart, and he got cast down to earth to sift the saints for inquiring minds. Anyway, different study, different day. So, yeah, there you go right there in Jeremiah. Jeremiah 10, 1 through 5. And what's another precept of men? Well, let's go over here to Acts. I'm going to show you another precept, another tradition of men. Okay, so there's a tradition of men that we can relate to today. Uh, Acts 12, uh, that tells us, you know, people do set trees up in their house every year, and they don't just deck them with silver and gold anymore. Man, they got some fancy decorations for them trees nowadays. That's for certain, for certain they do. So see, there's a tradition of men. The Lord said, don't do it. And what do we do every year? We do it anyway. Now, what I used to do before I knew Jeremiah said that, and I wasn't in the book enough to know what I was doing was wrong. I was actually doing a pagan ritual every year. On the December the 25th, I was doing pagan rituals. That's right. It looked really good. It smelled really good. It felt good even. It felt good, man. But something in my heart felt wrong. I was like, something ain't right about this, you know. <laughs> All right. So here's another tradition of men. I don't know where I'm going with that, but let's get on over here to uh, Acts 12. Acts 12. Acts 12. Okay, Acts 12. And uh, I'm going to show you another tradition of, of men. And I'm also going to show you a ordinance of the Father. Okay, here's a tradition of men. In verse 4 it says, and when he had apprehended him, he put him into prison and delivered him to four quadrants of soldiers to keep him intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Now, how do I know that that wasn't a Christian celebration? <laughs> because a pagan king was keeping it. And you have to look what was going on at the same time. Let's back up a verse now and read it in its entirety. In verse 3 it says, and because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of unleavened bread. So just like this year, Passover and unleavened bread and Easter every year are running neck and neck with each other. you got the world keeping Easter. And you've got God's chosen keeping his feast days. Passover, unleavened bread. And you're either able or unable to keep those feasts. And I'm going to get into a lesson about that here in the next day or two. Because unfortunately I have found myself wanting this year. And I'm unable to partake of that feast which breaks my heart. I'm hoping to have everything straight away and be clean uh, by this next Passover. There's two Passovers just in case you find yourself unclean or traveling or whatever. Um, and uh, anyway that's a lesson for a different day. So he says right here, he says it was the days of unleavened bread. And then verse 4 says he was intending that after Easter, he was going to go ahead and, you know, boom, do what he got to do, right? So right there are two occasions talked about in the Bible that we can relate to today. We still keep those traditions in the world today. We, we're cutting trees down every December to 20, you know, November. In November, we start cutting trees down, setting them up in our houses. We don't. 
But I'm talking about the world. The world cuts them trees down, sets them up in their house, and decorate them. I used to do it till I learned better. See, now I don't do that no more because the Bible said, don't do that. Don't do that. You do this. And what's he say do? Well, uh, what's the whole duty of a man? Let's go over here to Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes is right after Proverbs. Right after Proverbs. I want to go to Ecclesiastes chapter 12. And let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. It's a verse 13. Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and verse 13 says, Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. You hear what he said? The whole duty of a man is to fear him and to keep his commandments, right? Let's go to 2 Timothy. Go over here to 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy over here. There's 1 Timothy. We're going to 2 Timothy 3. Let's go to 2 Timothy 3. And I want to read you 2 Timothy 3. I'm going to pick it up over here at verse 16. It says this right here. It says, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works, right? Now we're going to go right into 2 Timothy 4. It says, I charge you, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word, be in season, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. What doctrine? This doctrine right here, he just said all scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine. That's the doctrine he's talking about. He's not talking about the doctrine of Easter, where for instance, you go get a, 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 a basket and you fill it up with all this sweet stuff that's going to you know, hurt the kids' teeth, number one. It's going to spike their sugar intake and get them all hyper and probably get them in trouble, number two. Um, and the biggest thing is it's a lie. It's a lie. There's no bunny rabbit out there leaving Easter baskets for children and colored eggs and candy. And that's a fable. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on, we're going to cover that here. We're going to cover that here. A fable. Right here, jump down to verse 4. It says, And they shall turn away their ears from the truth, which is the Bible, and shall be turned unto fables. Did you hear what I just said? So, the majority of churches out there this last December celebrated Christmas. Even a few Sabbath-keeping ones had their trees up singing Christmas carols. Like old Three Angels broadcasting over there. I don't know what's going on with them folks. But why would they rebel against the Most High and allow some other God into their ministry? But they do it every year. I'm not here to bash them. I know there's some good people over there spreading the good news in love, right? I mean, if it wasn't for that rung in the ladder, I don't know that who I would have learned about the Sabbath through because they're who taught me about the Sabbath. And then it was Israel that brought me into the rest of the truth. Maybe that's where I was messing up. <laughs> different study, different day. <laughs> it's got to come through Israel. Whether you are uh, an adoptee or flesh and blood, one of Joseph's boys. Because <laughs> I, I promise you those other tribes are little bitty in number. and it's, You bump into one of them, you bumping into somebody. But you can definitely see one of Joseph's boys just about on every street corner. They've been truly scattered. 
All right. That that was in my Hebrew Israelite hybrid uh, lesson. Go check that out. Hybrid Israelites. You go. That's a really really good lesson that shows us that we shouldn't be joining into any propaganda that has that pertains to our nationality, or our flesh color, or any other uh, entity of power other than the scriptures of God in love and charity only. Uh, those are not hard precursors to see. Okay, so we just read there, quick and the dead. He's going to judge them. Okay, let's go to Psalms 1. So, if you have been uh, judged by God, who are you? Is it the sinners that are being judged? Well, let's go check it out. Let's go, let's go look and see what's going to happen to the sinners. I'm in Psalms chapter 1. I'm going to start reading at verse 1. It says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. You're blessed if you don't walk in the counsel or instructions of those that are ungodly. Right there, right out the gate. Or stands in the way of sinners. So like a sinner acts or stands, you're not doing that neither. Or sits in the seat of the scornful. So if you're sitting in a seat, you're sitting in the seat of power or control. You're not sitting in the seat of the scorn. You're not scorning no one, see? And then it says in verse 2, But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Now that's the Son of God. A child of God. That's who that is. Now, let's see about those sinners we just read about over there. Remember? Those people that are setting those trees up, right? Those people that are honoring him with their lips, but not with their heart, right? Let's, let's read about them now. It says, Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor the sinners in the congregation of the righteous. What? The ungodly aren't going to be judged? No, what is there to judge? He's going to look at a lot of people and he's going to say, I never knew you. And they're, right before he says that to him, he's going to say, those people are going to be saying to him, but I did all these wonderful things in your name, in the name of Jesus. Well, doesn't he say over in Matthew, many will come in my name and say, I am the Christ and deceive many. How did they deceive them? They wasn't teaching the whole word of God. They was only teaching the feel-good parts. Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. Send me your money. Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. Do what I told you to do. Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. Send me some more money. See how that works? That's basically what's going on. They're proselytes. You can read about them uh, uh, being uh, stood up like their daddy an angel, as an angel of light. Oh, kid not the enemy also stand up his ministers as angels of light? Aren't you wondering who those people are? <laughs> you can go check on that. You're on your own. So through two to four, there you have read about the fables. And in Psalms here, the ungodly, yeah, the ungodly, they shall not stand in the judgment. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. He knows the way of the righteous because the way of the righteous are following his words. We're keeping the Sabbath. We're trying our hardest to keep it holy and remember it all day long, all night long and all day long. We're keeping the feast days back there in the Torah because those are the high intimate Sabbath days that we can be intimate with God and learn more about him, whether we're on the right side or on the bad side, whether we're ready, we're clean, or we're not clean. We still need to go into that room with him and learn from him and sit down with him and sup with him and let him teach us and mold and, and guide us and protect us uh, 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 through his word. All right, so now let's go back to uh, 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 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy, all right, let's go back to 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy 4, right? Yeah, 2 Timothy 4. And I want to read uh, 2 through 4, and it says here, Preach the word, be in season, and be instant. Preach the word, be instant, right? Be instant. In season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. 
This doctrine up here, he said, all scripture is given by the inspiration of God. It is profitable for doctrine. That's the doctrine we're talking about right here. This King James Bible right here. The scriptures right here. Okay? And three says, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. Oh, what's a fable? Well, let me see Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. That's a reindeer telling a story. Uh, Frosty Snowman, that's a fable. That's a dead thing. That's something that don't even exist. It's a made-up dude out of snow telling a story. A fat man come Christmas. The whole Christmas theme is, is, is fables. Fat men don't come down chimneys. They never have. And anybody that has ever tried to has either needed to help to get out by the fire department or they ended up perishing in that chimney. Absolutely, you ain't doing that. No, you ain't gonna, it ain't going to happen. Uh, they definitely don't see the whole world sleeping, know when you're awake, know when you're good, know when you're bad, so be good for goodness sake and all that stuff, that little chant the children do every year. I was raised in all that, see? I'm no better. All right, so number four, yeah, yeah, it's, it's the truth. They're going to turn away from truth, and they're going to be turned to fables, right? Let's go to 1 Timothy 4. Back up one book. 1 Timothy 4. 1 Timothy 4. And I want to read verse 16 says, Take heed unto yourself and unto the doctrine. Continue in them, for in doing this you shall both save yourself and them that hear you. Now, I know y'all got family members out there that love you. Now, if you're taking heed to yourself, and you're following through these scriptures, and you're doing exactly what it says over there in Romans 12 and 2, you're not being conformed to the ways of the world and setting trees up in your house every year. You're not being conformed to doing that. You're being transformed by the renewing of your mind in these scriptures. All right? That's what this lesson's called. Be you transformed. Now, I'm telling you, be you transformed. Come out of her, his people. Come out of her, people of God. Who, her, who? Her, the world. Come out of her. Come out of the world. And enter into the wisdom and the rest of the Father. Enter into the rest, enter into her, this wisdom, see, your mother. Honor your father and your mother, see, all right? All right, Philippians, we got one more after that, I believe. Let's go to Philippians 2. So you might be like, man, how am I going to get away from my whole family? They all be celebrating these things. They're all going to condemn me. They're going to make fun of me. I'm not going to get to go help grandma make cookies or candy anymore. I mean, what's going to happen? I'm so scared. I don't know what to do. Hey, I had them same thoughts. I was like, man, everybody's going to be like, I actually had the opposite thought. I thought, <gasps> I thought I'd done bumped into something that nobody else has seen, read, or heard, right? So I just ran and told everybody, <gasps> look, we're not supposed to do this or that. And I was condemned right out the gate. They looked at me and go, you need to go on with that Bible stuff. I mean, it's, it, 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 it's bad. Uh, Philippians 2, and I'm going to read, start reading at verse 12. Wherefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Well, do you remember what we read back here in Ecclesiastes? He said the whole duty of a man is to what? Fear God. And keep, and keep his commandments. What did he command us to do back here in Jeremiah? Learn not the way of the heathen. What's that? That's what exactly what uh, Romans 12 says. Be transformed from the ways of the heathen and be conformed to the ways of God. That's what I'm trying to teach you here in this lesson, see? And let's go on and read here. He says, uh, 13, For it is God which works in you both to will and and to do of his good pleasure. So when God's trying to draw you out right now under the sound of my voice, he's like, don't set that tree up next year. You need to go back and watch my lesson. I think it's called Occasions. Happy birthday. And then in parentheses, it says occasions. Okay? Hey, if you're going to be mad at me over this lesson, then you might as well go watch that lesson too and get even more mad at me. Because I'm telling you, there's a lot to this. 
Our God is a jealous God, and in the first five commandments are all about betraying him, not betraying him, see? We don't want to betray God, and that's what the first five commandments are about. And then the other five are about not betraying your fellow man or your neighbor. That's right, being loving and kind, just like Jesus was, okay? All right, so you see that right there, right? right? He says, do uh, 14, do all things without murmuring and disputings, that you may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation among whom you shine as lights in the world. See, that's how. If we can get ourselves under control, if we can control our own character, control our own wrath and anger, then we're going to shine as lights to the people around us. We're not just going to be sitting here talking about this book. We're going to be shining like a light, man. No joke. Seriously, that's what it says, and God's not a liar. He says in 16, Hold, Holding forth the word of life, that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. Yea, and if I be offered upon the sacrifice and service of your faith, I joy and rejoice with you all. So he's just basically saying right here, Work out your own faith and your own relationship with God and fear. Now, do you fear God? Because if you truly fear God, then you're going to listen to his Ten Commandments. And if you're going to listen to his Ten Commandments, then you're going to listen to those commandments where it says, Thou shalt put no other God before me. Thou shalt not bow, thou, bow this, thyself down and worship them. What do you do every year in December the 25th? You get down on your hands and knees in front of that decorated tree and you bow yourself down to pull gifts out from that tree. Not God. From that tree. I don't care. That child ain't sitting there looking at Jesus. That child's sitting there looking at a Christmas tree and watching you pull gifts out from underneath it and give it to them. Now you can sit there and sing happy birthday to Jesus all you want. <clears throat> I do it every day for December 25th. I used to wake up and sing happy birthday to you. And I'd sing it the best of I could because I love Jesus. Then I realized I wasn't singing to Jesus at all. I was singing to old Slewfoot. I'm just thankful that Jesus loved me despite my ignorance. <laughs> and that's how we need to love one another, see? That's part of being transformed, okay? Philippians. All right, now let's go over here to Thessalonians 4. Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians 4, I'm going to pick it up here at verse 16. It says, If you will be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, and you let these words in this Bible, Father, please let my video record, please. And you let these words in this Bible only transform your heart and your mind, and you stop doing everything that the world's doing around you. Okay? With these occasions. They're called occasions. It's not called Christmas in the Bible. It's called an occasion. Okay? If you'll do that, then this is your reward right here. I'm in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16. It says, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Go to Zechariah. Go to Zechariah. Zechariah 14. I'm going to show you where the Lord's going that day. He picks us. We meet him in the air. Zechariah 14. You can't leave this undone. you got to teach the whole word of God. Zechariah 14 and 4 says, And his feet shall stand in that day 
upon the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem on the east, and the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof toward the east and toward the west, and there shall be a very great valley, and half of the mountain shall remove toward the north, and half of it toward the south, and you shall flee to the valley of the mountains, for the valley of the mountains shall reach unto Azale. Yea, you shall flee, like as you fled from before the earthquake in the days of Uzziah, king of Judah. And the Lord my God shall come, and all the saints with him. Now, how many times is he coming back to this planet? One more time. He's not coming back to take us off to some heavenly kingdom and then bring us back a third time. No, 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 no. This earth's only 6,000 plus years old. The minute we go into seven or 5,000 plus years old, the minute we go into 6,001, we go into the, 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 the day of peace. That's when we sit and rule and reign with Christ. And you've already seen in this lesson where the ungodly are going. So we need to be training ourselves to be righteous. No matter what our past was, we need to keep moving forward. No matter what our past was, we need to keep moving forward. Even whenever it tries to jump from behind us right out in front of us and display itself to us, we need to go around it and just keep moving forward and trust our God and our King Jesus. It's exactly what we need to do. It's exactly what we need to do. The Bible says that uh, 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 the Lord my God shall come and all the saints with him. Go to Amos 1. Amos 1. Amos 1. All right. Amos 1, and this will be closing. Amos 1 says, The words of Amos, who was among the Hardim, Hardim of Tekoa, which he saw concerning Israel in the days of Uzziah, king of Judah, and in the days of Jeroboam, the son of Joash, king of Israel, two years before the earthquake. Now, you want to see what kind of earthquake going to happen over in Zechariah 14? Go read that. Go read that. Cross-reference. Get in here and dig, 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 dig. You got to dig. You got to dig. You've seen it. I want to go right to the, to, the, uh, to, the, to the verse that sparked this here lesson right here. Let's go to Romans chapter 12, y'all. Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. Okay. I hope this lesson helps someone. Thank you, Father, for letting it record the whole lesson in its entirety. Romans chapter 12, I'm going to read verse 2, and it says, And be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You all have a good day and read your Bibles.